LNT Finance uh, took a cautious approach to lending in quarter three, largely influenced by the unraveling of LNFS crisis and the uncertain liquidity scenario. Disbursements dipped 20% on a YOI on a quarter on quarter basis, uh, but on a YOI basis, the numbers looked fairly okay. To give us an update on the LNFS exposure and decode the numbers in further detail, joining us on the show now is MD and CEO Dinanath Dubashi. Mr. Dubashi, good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. I want to start off with uh, the, the broad mood around the space and your company as well on one the cost of capital and the liquidity situation how are both of these as we speak how how were they in the quarter so generally headline is that liquidity is definitely improved but uh, most definitely there is a flight to quality uh, we see uh, mutual funds banks uh, pension funds uh, insurance companies more preferring the paper of good nbfcs and that is where we see that we are at advantage so that is number one number two uh, there are two factors which are working uh, is definitely uh, cost of bank lines uh, as you know banks have increased interest rate cost of bank lines has gone up already uh, and uh, cost of CPs have come down right and hence we expect largely I had initially indicated that from Q2 to Q3 the in increase will be about 25 to 30 basis points and from Q3 to Q4 the increase will be another 20 basis point that is what I had indicated three months back now it looks like obviously from Q2 to Q3 the increase has been just about 17 basis points and we expect Q4 the weighted average of all this uh, you know happening the increase will be between 0 to 5 basis points. So Q4 we expect largely the weighted average cost to be remaining steady uh, at Q3 uh, range. That's what uh, general expectation is as of now. Okay, Mr. Dubashi, uh, what about quarter 4 before we get to some other aspects of quarter 3? Do you reckon that it will be more benign than what was earlier believed? I, I think Q4 will be much more benign than what we initially believed it to be. Uh, I think uh, some uh, uh, good confidence building statements made by the regulator and the government has helped. Uh, some banks have taken some good measures by buying uh, you know, the portfolios of some companies. Uh, no defaults happened uh, you know, as November as they were rumored to be. And based on this, slowly confidence is coming back I, I believed always that it was a crisis of confidence than any real crisis in the sector and as slowly and surely uh, I believe that as other good NBFCs also declare results uh, the situation should uh, you know the confidence should come back even more but the headline statement if I have to make Q4 will be definitely more benign uh, than what we thought three months back that Q4 will be surely Okay, so Q4 more benign. So while caution prevents on the street, LNT Finance Holdings seems to be very confident. But you would have gone slow on developer loans, Mr. Dubashi. How tough is the scene out there and what's the outlook? Yes, absolutely. You are right that developer loans, one has to be very selective. So first of all, let me say that we are developer loans uh, is our core business. It is our strength because of our group strength. Uh, LNT builds uh, buildings for many developers, top class developers. That knowledge, those contacts, that uh, you know, proprietary knowledge uh, gives us tremendous strength in this business. And we are, uh, we believe that our credit, our uh, early warnings. Uh, mechanisms are one of the best so we are it is our core business having said that uh, yes uh, there is clearly uh, you know we were always doing the top builders a and b category builders there we will be even more careful in selection of builders uh, making sure that even within those builders the project that we select will be very strong projects and the monitoring will be even even more stronger that if our monitoring team used to uh, visit uh, a particular site at a particular frequency that frequency will be increased there will be certain project where the monitoring team is per permanently placed so uh, you know doing all this we believe that uh, we are mitigating the risk well and it's a good opportunity actually to lend to uh, excellent real estate projects okay but so while 34 percent is a good number but slower than the 50% number in quarter one, which you did before. Will these numbers continue? 
Uh, no, this 34 percent. So first of all, there is a very clear base effect. If you would see our disbursement in quarter three is actually lower than quarter two, so which shows that we have to be we have been much more selective. So uh, the growth rates, you know, the book growth rate is a is a function of your book rundown and new disbursements. But largely, disbursement should remain around this 1500, 1600 crores per quarter level. That is what we expect. It of course uh, disbursements here are not like retail. There is no run rate, right? You have to find good projects. But let me, if I have to put strategically, it is no longer the matter of liquidity availability. It is a matter of risk appetite and uh, credit, uh, you know, uh, number of projects passing through our credit matrices. Uh, if we don't find any good business, we will not do it. It's as simple as that. Okay. Uh, now, you know, ILNFS becomes very important, Mr. Dubashi, because uh, a lot of mutual funds are talking about how the subsidiaries, the step-down subsidiaries might not honor the repayments as well, and therefore there could be markdowns to NAVs. What happens in such a scenario to you? Because I presume you have exposure to ILNFS and its subsidiaries via the road projects as well. Uh, you know, the treatment that various lenders will do is different. So let me state, you know, because this issue is very muddied and very confused. So let me be uh, divided into two. One is the uh, NCLAT moratorium order and the effect of that. And second is any actual losses. And this too, it is very important to separate the two issues. So first, let us talk about the moratorium order. We have taken very strong legal opinion, including of a former Chief Justice of India, that the moratorium order clearly refers to any uh, precipitative action to be taken by the lenders. So early repayment or foreclosures or any legal thing, it doesn't stop any regular payments. This is our view. Uh, as of 31st December, all our payments are current. Um, and as you rightly said, uh, ILFS, some subsidiaries may take a separate view and it is to be seen. But the good thing is that the next NCLAT hearing is on 28th, which is just seven days from now. And we will get the clarification and we hopefully it will clear a uh, lot of air on this moratorium part. So that's as far as moratorium is concerned. Let us take the worst case scenario, we don't believe so, but let us take the worst case scenario that the moratorium even, uh, you know, uh, uh, is about the normal repayment. Uh, what will happen is, yes, normal repayments may get delayed, but the fact that all our six projects are operating, four are annuity based, for two there are very clear, um, you know, visibility of collections of tolls uh, and we are senior secured in each of these projects. Uh, we completely control the escrows. The possibility on any loss given default finally is nil. And as you know, under INDES, where we have moved, the provision to be taken or the expected credit losses are probability of default into loss given default. So if loss given default is zero, the question of taking uh, provisions does not arise. So to state very simply and you know take out these technicalities, we believe that the order doesn't stop regular repayments. But in any case, and we have taken lots of legal opinion, uh, including a Supreme Court uh, uh, CGI, uh, uh, past CGI, uh, but even considering that, let's say, uh, and there is a clarification expected on 28th, even in case that goes against this, for example, uh, the loss given default we expect to be nil because of the intrinsic strength of the projects. We believe that all those projects are equity positive, which will be good for the projects, good for us and good for ILFS and uh, the equity holders of ILFS at the, at the end of it. So we believe that, yes, you are right, atmosphere a bit murky now, but uh, clarity should emerge very soon. Okay. Lastly. What kind of growth numbers can one expect from you in quarter four? You mentioned it will be a lot more benign. Can you put some numbers out there? Uh, I, I, I would quarter four should largely be on the line of quarter three, uh, except for say the rural business. So generally speaking, rural business maximum uh, disbursement is always in Q3. Uh, simple because this time Dashera and Diwali both came in Q3. So uh, obviously it's the festive season and maximum uh, disbursements happen. So Q4 disbursements will definitely be lower than Q3 because there is no festival in Q4. But uh, year on year. Uh, 
uh, the good growth should continue uh, after that i don't want to give any short term guidance it's an enigmatic year uh, there is elections happening we don't know how rainfall is going to be too early to talk about short term guidances but uh, the the growth number of cagr of five years of 18 to 20% and uh, top quartile roe is is the guidance we give and we are confident of maintaining that over a medium 3 to 3 uh, to 5 years medium term period